Hey everybody, Necroxus is here, and I am making a video on a topic that I wish I didn't have to make a video on. Um, because even though, you know, I love being right so much, <laughs> is the stereotype people who disagree with me like to say. Um, in this case, I'm actually very sad that I am right. Um, and I'm talking about, if you haven't seen it, there's new information that has just come out about the subscriptions for World of Warcraft in the first quarter of this year, which was basically the first time we got to see subscription numbers since Warlords of Draenor was released. So, here you go. Okay, so here we go. We have the unfortunate news. World of Warcraft is down to 7.1 million subscribers. Blizzard just had their quarter four 2014 call and it, that one listed at 10 million subscribers. That was the last one. For their quarter one earnings, it looks like we are down to 7.1 million subscribers. As you can see on this graph, if I learn how to expand things correctly, um, that was right when pretty much WAD launched. They had a big hurrah about, wow, it's above 10 million subscribers once again. Bam. We've dropped to almost the lowest point in, war in World of Warcraft's history, after it's picked up popularity, of course, which was right around here. Um, we got pretty close with 9.1 million in Cataclysm, um, and then the biggest, lowest number we've had since it actually became popular was 6.8 um, back at the end of Mists of Pandaria. June 2014, if you remember, was during the lull of the almost year, or the over the year, excuse me, um, where Siege of Orgrimmar was out. And that was, remember, Siege of Orgrimmar was the last raid patch of the expansion. We are only through the first raid patch, if you want to call it that, the launch, the first raid patch launch um, of Warlords of Draenor. 6.2 is not even out yet. And we are already at 7.1 million subscribers. That is not good for World of Warcraft, guys. So there we have it. That's the unfortunate news. Now, um, the reason I said that I was right is because if you've been watching my channel since the Warlords Alpha started, I got in Wave 1 of the Alpha um, through my connection I had with Blizzard. Um, I, I'm going to be honest, guys. I said from the very, very, very beginning that Warlords of Draenor looks like it's shaping up to have a lot of problems. And, you know, at the time, I got a lot of flack for it, A, because people were like, well, it, alpha and beta is alpha and beta, what are you expecting? Um, and people were saying, like, oh, they're going to fix it. And then when the game released exactly as pretty much it was when we were testing it, people were just calling me a hater um, and saying that maybe I've been playing the game for too long, which personally to me was quite insulting because I have a very large love of the Warcraft franchise. And like I've repeatedly said, I don't criticize the game because I hate it and I want it to be destroyed or I want it to be bad. It's the complete opposite. I criticize it because I'm sad that it's bad. <laughs> and I wish it could be better. And I know that it could be better because we've seen better things in the past. Now, I've also given Warlords of Draenor its credit. You know, I will say this expansion has the best in-game cinematics for... Um, just questing out of any expansion they've ever done. You know, all of the cinematics at the end of every single zone, except Gorgoron doesn't have one because I have my own theories, but it really feels like Gorgoron was half-assed and then they just never finished it. Um, but, you know, Shadowmoon Valley and Frostfire Ridge, the Draenei one and the, the Orc one were amazing. Um, you know, the one at Shatrath was fantastic. The Garrosh one was probably my favorite. It was awesome. Spires also didn't have one, but, um, and I really, it could have used one, although I felt like I still really liked it without one, which is Gorgrond, I hate, Gorgrond is by far the zone that I cannot stand the most. Um, but, so, you know, there are good things to Warlords, which is why I always found myself a little bit annoyed when people would just say, Necro, you're just a big ol' hater. You're just hating on the game. No, I'm criticizing it because there are good elements to it. There are good elements to it that have just been buried under piles and piles of garbage and finally we see the numbers vindicating what i've been saying the whole time 
which is why, and I'm sad that, it, that they are. But I'm not surprised. I've been saying it the entire time. I'm on record on this very channel saying you're going to see the first quarter earnings when they come out after Warlords. The subscriptions are going to fall. And 2.9 million players being lost in, what, four months? It is the most that the game has ever dropped in its history in over 10 years of being out. We just experienced the biggest loss of subscribers ever. And you cannot say that it's because the game is old. Because Mists of Pandaria, the game was still old. And there was not a drop in one period, even close to that amount. The closest one is the one in, that I showed you in the clip in the middle of July of 2014. And that was when there was literally nothing coming out. Once again, let me reiterate, we've only been through the first raid tier, and there's still a whole nother one out. What's going to happen after 6.2 is done and we're waiting for the next expansion? under the theory that there's not three raid patches this expansion, which I firmly believe. Um, what, what's going to happen to the sub numbers then? Are we going to dip like below 5 million? That's a danger zone for WoW. Now, I'm not saying in any of this that WoW is dead or WoW is dying or blah, 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 blah. blah. I'm not claiming any of that because the game's not. There's still way more players than most of the other MMORPGs out there combined. But for WoW standards, here's how I think we have to look at it. We have to examine the sub numbers for World of Warcraft in the context of World of Warcraft. Because I've also seen arguments out there being like, Why are you complaining that the sub numbers are this when SWOTOR has only like 2,500,000 people playing their game or whatever it is. I'm just making up a number. Um, and I feel like that's a really disingenuous argument because WoW is the big one. WoW is the big boy, the daddy, the king on the mountain. You know, you have to compare the WoW subscription numbers with past WoW subscription numbers. You can't say, like, oh, Warcraft is still doing f amazing. It's it's doing better than ever because all the other MMOs are doing p terribly. No, you can still say WoW is doing good because it's so much more than the others, but you can't say the game hasn't, you know, lost a significant number of players when you look at historic numbers that I just showed you from how the game used to be for, you know, pretty much two and a half expansions. It was consistently above 11 million players. Now, I will completely accept the argument that we lost maybe like a million players because the game is old and people don't want to play it anymore. People don't want to play it for that long. I know people like that who I used to play with and talk with every single day because of World of Warcraft that I just don't even talk to anymore at all because they don't play it and I still do. But we can't deny we, we cannot deny the simple fact that Warlords not only <laughs> cost more, which I'll get to in a second, but delivered less content than the previous expansion. You know, we had an entire zone removed. And I'm not going to relitigate this entire argument about Tanan Jungle. I'm just going to flat out say I'm right in this regard. At BlizzCon, when they announced it, Tanan Jungle was included in the launch content and was removed after the fact. I don't care when it was removed after the fact. It was removed after the fact. So, we have objectively less content in this expansion. And it's cost $10 more. And you know how I'm right about this and how they, if not did it purposely but don't have a problem with it? Because they boasted about the fact that even though they've had the biggest drop ever, their profits really haven't fallen that much. And the reason why? They said because the game was $10 more than it was in the past. That was flat out admitted in the call, guys. I'm not being a conspiracy theorist. You know, it's, not, it's no longer a subjective argument to say there's less content and it costs more. It's fact, and they even admit it, which is why I'm so, I don't know, you know, especially with 6.2 PTR and how much I really, really enjoy it, I cannot help but compare Warlord's launch with 6.2, especially the Garrison campaign, and I'm, my biggest thing is the lore and the story in 6.2 is amazing, all of the Garrison campaigns are deeply connected with the story, they're not a bunch of irrelevant bullshit like 80% of the garrison campaigns we've done so far on live were. 
you know, Tanan Jungle looks amazing, blows every other zone out of the water, in my opinion. I haven't personally done any of the raid fights, but I've watched every single testing one, and for pretty much every single one of them, except Kilrog Deadeye, which is kind of disappointing, um, but his is still really good, but out of all of them, except maybe Kilrog, they look miles better than anything that I've done in 6.0, and I've raided both instances on non-LFR difficulties. Like, my guild right now, I believe we're 4 out of 10 in Heroic. Um, we're 9 out of 10 on normal Blackrock Foundry. So I've done basically everything except do Black Hand. So when I say that I think that what we're getting in, in Hellfire Citadel looks better than the other two instances, I'm not other raid instances we already have, I don't feel like I'm talking out of my ass here. Like, I'm talking from experience. And, and all of this is just, the point is, it makes me so disappointed that the launch content is very bad. <laughs> like, I think it's quite bad compared to what we're getting coming up, which looks amazing. And so, in the end, I feel like what we learned today validated the claims I've been saying for quite a long time, but I'm disappointed that I have been validated. Does that make sense? I'm not even happy about it, which is such a bummer, by the way, because usually you want to be happy that you're proven right. But I'm not, and I knew I wasn't going to be when... I've always known this was going to happen. Like, I knew the sub-numbers were going to come out, and they were, going to, they were going to fall a lot. I've said so on a bunch of videos. I got a lot of shit for it. Some of the videos I criticized stuff for, I, like, more than half of the, the like-dislike bar was disliked because people didn't, dis, didn't agree with me. I still feel bad about it, guys. And, you know, there's all, I, could, I could explain why... There, all these subs have been lost, you know, but just in general terms, I think some of the problems are no flying. Whether you want to admit it or not, there are a lot of people now and who have been saying since there wasn't going to be flying and who have been saying since the game came out that they are not playing because they cannot fly. And you cannot argue that the zones were not built around flying because they flat out say all of the zones since Wrath of the Lich King, which is when... Flying more became a huge thing. Wrath of the Lich King and Cataclysm, ever since those zones, those expansions, every single zone they make, with the exception of like the patch zones like Firelands that are specifically made not to fly or Timeless Isle, every single one of the expansions, every single zone that they make, they purposely develop it so that they can enable flying at any time. And the fact that there's not flying in Warlords now and we're still not getting flying, it doesn't look like they haven't enabled it on the PTR. They've been very suspiciously silent on the topic, despite a lot of people on the PTR forums asking about flying in the old Draenor um, areas. Not a word, so I'm confident to say that we're probably not going to get flying even in the old zones in 6.2. There are a lot of people who don't play because of that. That's one huge reason. Another huge reason is we lost to Non Jungle from the the uh, the launch content. I'm glad it's amazing now. I guess that's what happens when you get another eight, nine months of development time because you promised something and then apparently couldn't deliver it and you had to cut it. I'm sure that's another reason. The Facebookification, I would, I would say is the term, of a lot of Warlords of Draenor features is a major turnoff to a lot of people. Maybe not to have... I'm sure most people who have the problem now of the Facebookification... They bought the game and they subscribed, but they a lot of them dropped off very, very fast when they realized that Garrisons were basically a giant Farmville game where no matter what you did, it was a time sink. You could not progress no matter how long you played because there was real time gates of real time amounts, not in-game stuff that you could fast forward or skip, real in the real world time gates for most, if not every single garrison feature that exists. And that is something I cannot say has ever been done in any other expansion to even close a degree as was in Warlords. Missa Pandaria had the farm, but you could just ignore the farm completely and never do anything for it. You cannot say you, have, you, you can ignore the garrison. At the very least, you have to do it. And at the very worst, if you don't take advantage of your garrison... Ooh, I'm hitting my mic. I'm getting so passionate. If you don't take advantage of your garrison, you are at such a disadvantage in PvP or PvE or just grinding pets or 
any kind of method of play you like. If you don't do the garrison, you are at such a disadvantage. I would say you are not even on an equal playing field with people who do. <coughs> Excuse me. So you cannot say, oh, just don't use the garrison. You cannot use the garrison. I just wouldn't even consider you on an equal playing field in any of those play styles compared to people who do. So the Facebookification of the garrisons. And the garrisons aren't even the only thing that this has happened to. You know, we have the reputation factions, which have been removed and gone all the way back to the vanilla style of the only way you can gain reputation is by killing mobs in the world. We're not back in 2006, guys. That should not have happened, Blizzard. I have no idea how you could have possibly thought that was a good idea. How? You have the removal of daily quests in exchange of this Apexis daily grind, which again is exactly the same as the reputation grind. It's just killing mobs in the world. That isn't fun. That isn't innovative. That isn't something that would make me want to play with others. The only reason I grouped up with people with Apexis for the Apexis daily is because you could cheese it and go really fast. That's not because I wanted to play with them. It's because I wanted to get through this garbage content really fast. Um, what else do we have? Let's see. The legendary quest chain is riddled with time gates way more than the old one was. You know, I expect a time gate for the legendary quest chain because it's a legendary quest chain. Um, but there's just there's a lot more than the other ones were. I would say Miss of Pandaria in almost every case. I'm not gonna say any because I could be wrong. But only one time in each patch did you have like a thing you had to collect every week, and therefore it was an artificial time gate. Like for Miss of excuse me Pandaria, it was. Um, in six in five point oh, it was the sigils you had to get from the raids. That was the time gate of five point oh. Five point one, there was no time gate. Six five point two, you had to collect the things from Throne of Thunder. That was the time gate. Five point three, there's no time gate. Five point four, there was no time gate. In Mists of Pandaria, or excuse me, in Warlords of Janor in six point oh. Let's see, the time gates we had was one. We had a high mall time gate where we had to get to the artifacts. Black Rock Foundry, the same raid tier, had another time gate. Um, 6.1 did nothing to the legendary quest chain. It unlocked the Garona part, but that was considered, that's, in all, for all accounts, you know, whatever you want to say, it should have been part of 6.0, like all of 6.1 should have been, because it was stuff that they promised at BlizzCon. 6.2, there's another time gate, so that's three time gates within two raid tiers. Mr. Pandaria, one time gate, and one raid tier. So again, the, the the Facebookification of a lot of features in Warlords is a reason why a lot of people quit. Um, have I forgotten anything else? I'm not sure, but I would say in the end, to wrap up the video, I'm not surprised we lost so many people. Warlords of Draenor had a lot of potential. A lot of potential, even ignoring. I haven't even brought up the problem with the asinine time universe travel story. That I absolutely hate. And the only reason I like it is because I get to see Ghoul Dan, who is my favorite character. But I still would take not an expansion of this, if I, even, if, even though I wouldn't get to see Ghoul Dan. I didn't even mention that. And so, because a lot of people don't really care about that. But for me, I feel like between the awesomeness that is Ghoul Dan, you know, between the amazing, the amazing in-game cinematics, you know... The story twist at the end of 6.0 where the Legion is now in control was very well done, and I liked it a lot, and I really liked the 6.2 story. So when I sit here and I say, Warlords had so much potential, I mean it. I would even accept the stupid dimension traveling story if just what we got in 6.0 was good. But as it turns out, and as I have been saying for a long, long time, it looks like Warlords of Draenor is going to go down in history at least for the first half of its launch, or of its lifestyle, as just a steaming pile of garbage that has a thin sheet of gold over it. And once you get past that very first layer of, of sheen, it sucks underneath. It's very bad. So I just wanted to make a little bit of a react video to the information we have about the sub-numbers that just came out. Um, you know, I expect, once again, anytime I criticize Warlords, 
I get flamed for all of these things, and even though I spent so much of this video talking about how I'm sad that the game is bad and not that I want it to be bad, or how I wish it could have been so much better because of the features that I really liked, I'm still going to get flamed and called a hater. You know, just be respectful if you do. I, I don't care at this point if you think I'm, I'm being unfair to the game. Feel free to leave that response in the comments below. Just be respectful about it. Um, to all the new people who just subscribed, um, I hope I don't lose you because I bashed Warlords. Um, if you go back and look at any of my new videos, this is not a new opinion I have. And anyone who's been subscribed for a long time can affirm that. Um, I've had a lot of problems with the expansion since the get-go, since the very first alpha wave that I was in. So here you go. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below about pretty much everything we, we men I mentioned here. You know, the sub-losses, why you think they could be, the failings of Warlords of Draenor, the successes of Warlords of Draenor, um, or whatever else you want to talk about. So thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you next time. Right now, I'm going to go work on the Did You Know videos because I ended up getting a day off work. I got a day off work. I'm recording this on Wednesday, so I won't be working for, you know, 10 days straight. I'm going to go work on the Did You Know video um, until it's raid time, which is in about an hour and a half. But uh, until then, I'll see you guys next time for more Warlords of Draenor content. Oh, in last video I said I was going to go check on the PTR if the Garrison Campaign mission has been fixed. Still not fixed yet. I still haven't gotten another one yet. I think I'm stuck to where I need to complete this one before I'll get the next one. So hopefully there was just a new PTR push yesterday. Hopefully that's fixed it. I haven't checked yet. But, um, yeah, that's just an update for you because I know I, I kind of left it on the idea of, oh, I'm going to go see if it's working now. It's still not. So All right, I'm going to go check if it's working now after this video. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome. Stay loving the lore because even though I have, a many, I have many, many problems with this expansion, I still really love Warcraft's lore. Um, and I just really hope that it can be better because I want to enjoy things. I want to, I want to like things again in this expansion. And, you know, 6.2 it gets me really excited for one of the biggest reasons is because I really like it. So um, I just hope, I just hope, I hope they keep it as good as it is on the PTR. But until then, you guys, I will see you next time for either a garrison campaign on the PTR or a uh, Did You Know video coming this weekend, hopefully. But until then, I'll see you next time and stay awesome. And uh, yeah, farewell.